Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, good morning. Actually, nothing's good about it. I'm sick and losing my voice again. Anyway, enough side plot. As I'm sure you're aware, there are a lot of cool lens filters out there and also warm ones. Lately, I've really been exploring this dark, low contrast, hyper red scale look, and I wanted to take it to the next level. My main inspiration is definitely that radiated Vegas scene in Blade Runner 2049. After watching the behind the scenes of that movie, I found out that they used a lot of reference from a dust storm that occurred in Australia in 2009. And yeah, while I do like the look of these shots that I no filter raw dogged on red scale, there was still one glaring issue. They still did not have that atmospheric haze texture. So I started looking into ways to recreate it artificially and in my deep web research I found the Tiffin smoke filter. The smoke filter comes in several variations of density whereas the usual higher number means a stronger effect. I decided to go with a 3 on this one which is pretty dense. I wanted something that would strongly display the effect overall. And before we hit the field I just wanted to officially say Tiffin has nothing to do with this video. I purchased this filter completely independently with my own money that I stole from Monica's purse. With the filter in hand and on board the camera, I was finally off to the races. I started off at this car wash that I've driven by a couple times to throw eggs at the washed cars, and it always looked kinda cool at night. I made the executive decision to shoot handheld that evening for some reason that I can't possibly put into words, but maybe Premiere can. That was a 130th. Red scale is a variable ISO film. They say you can shoot it anywhere between 50 to 200 ISO. But honestly, I don't know what Lomo is smoking saying that you can shoot this film stock at 200. These were taken at 160 ISO and they're underexposed out the ass and then back around. Alrighty. Either way, you can kind of see the smoke filter in action. Like on this shot, where it creates this haze emanating from the light source in the center. One fifteenth again. I like this shot a lot. I think it effectively captured the mood that I'm after. It's dark and hazy, and frankly, it looks like somewhere you'd get murdered, cut up into pieces, and randomly spread out over a seven mile area, which is kinda aesthetic as fuck. Lately, as in I just started with this photo, I've been shooting with this technique where you place the significant light source in the background and let the pieces fall where they may, silhouette the objects in the foreground. Obviously, I don't have control over the lighting and the overall scene here, so it's really more of something that I'm just conscious of and looking out for when I go shoot. Does this look like a lighthouse? A little bit. <laughs> This shot had a lot of potential, and so did this one, but sadly, there just wasn't enough light. Don't worry, I do get my act together later on and do use a tripod. This shot is good. You don't really see the effect of the smoke filter too much, but regardless, it definitely looks haunted. So how does this heavy diffusion filter differ from something like a ProMist or Glimmer Glass? I think really the big difference is that the smoke filter maintains actual scene sharpness a lot better than the other two. And it also spreads out the glow quite a bit more on bright hotspots. In my experience, ProMists are more localized around the hotspot, whereas the smoke filter kind of creates an ambient haze of like a burning building nearby or something. Of course, nothing's gonna be the real thing, but most locations won't actually allow you to burn them down just to create a little ambient mood in your photo. Trust me, I've tried. Anyway, with basic baby bitch hour over, I finally decided to use a tripod so that I wouldn't be capturing everything wide open at 1 15th of a second like it was my first day ever using a camera. Oop, accidentally tripped the shutter. Good job, Jason. My first stop with the tripod was this automotive shop where I definitely underexposed again. I mean, at this point, it's just a pattern of incompetence, right?
All right, taking a picture of a Dunkin' Donuts. I feel like I should be getting paid for this. Let's take this before a car shows up. Nice. Focus is good, exposure is good. F4, one half. Aw, oh, I don't know if you can see this. They just turned these lights off. Anyway, at Classic Pastry is where some really went down. Cool. The shot is nice. It looks really isolated against the nighttime backdrop. But doubling down from there, I moved the camera around and shot this, which may be the best of the roll. I maybe would have preferred to back up a little bit, but I also didn't want to get hit by a car and have my obituary read something like, died semi-tragically in front of his favorite place, a pastry store. It's also a good showcase for the smoke filter. A nice haze is washed over both of these shots. In this case, it kind of eases off the bright parts and creates a grad into the darkness, which is damn near poetic. This shot of the library is nice overall, but it may be a strong case as to how the smoke filter can be a bit distracting in some situations. It turned these overhead lights into blobs of glow that just shoot your eyeballs straight to them instead of whatever I was trying to photograph here, which I couldn't even tell you what it is now that I'm looking at it. Here's a little pro tip. Don't carry around two tripods and film yourself all night. It hurts your arms. Here's another pro tip, wear your AirPods because it's kind of a universal sign for people to not f with you. I mean, they still will because it's LA, but yeah. That'll be a good one, hopefully. The smoke filter on this shot in particular doesn't really look too much like fog or mist, but more like someone just did a crazy burnout in their old ass Honda and there's some leftover exhaust in the intersection. So if that's the vibe you're going for in your work, then congrats, here you go. There's a single car sitting down there at the end of this uh, road that's under construction. Anyway, that was that for the roll, which Definitely ended on a high note. A lot of these shots look very noir, which is cool. Of the 36 exposure roll of Lomo Red Scale, I got about 24 keepers and at least one portfolio shot. I might change that later though. A lot of these shots are kind of cool. Do you have a deep love or passion for something that you do in life? Chances are, yeah. You do. Whether it's photography, cooking, or just sleeping in on the weekends, take it to the next level with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website building platform that features the ability to craft your own corner of the internet from the ground up. Start with one of hundreds of professionally designed templates that you can choose from and furnish your new site with Squarespace's intuitive user interface that allows you to build portfolios, blogs, and even web shops. I've been using Squarespace for years and recently reorganized my entire website for a more sleek and basic look that complements my photography portfolio much more aptly. And if you run into any snags during the process, you can check out Squarespace's award-winning 24-7 customer support to get you back on track in no time. So what are you waiting for? If you're ready to build a website, you can start a free trial today at squarespace.com slash grainy days. And if you use the code grainy days at checkout, you can get 10% off your first purchase. So is the smoke filter awesome enough to thread lock onto your lens permanently? Yeah, 
I think so. I'm definitely gonna keep using it on red scale at the very least. I don't know if it'd really work on any of the other stuff I typically shoot. Well, I think it's a solid emulation. I don't think any filter on the planet can actually effectively reproduce the look of mist or fog because ultimately what creates that look is the compound effect you get as you go further away from camera in scene depth. It separates the layers in your image quite well and no filter can actually render that for you. You need the real thing. You need real fog. But if you can't afford real fog, this smoke filter certainly gets you about halfway there. And maybe, just maybe, that filter might, for a split second, trick the viewer into thinking it's doing exactly what you intended it to do. I think Abraham Lincoln said it best when he said that there is truly a time and place for the Tiffin Smoke 3 filter.